Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be looking at Linux certifications, and I've been looking into this for myself and researching the cost and benefit of different Linux certifications, and I'm going to try to tell you guys which one I think you should take based on your goals and where you're currently at. So we're going to look at cost, we're going to look at possible salary ranges associated with these certifications, um, experience levels required, learning objectives for the exams, and I will at the end show you guys what I have chosen to do. And there is a plot twist. Starting off strong with the Linux Plus from CompTIA. Uh, CompTIA is a well-recognized organization, especially for those entry-level certifications. If you've seen any of my other content, I've done videos on Net Plus and Security Plus. My experience with CompTIA so far has been that they do a really good job of giving you foundational knowledge. And that holds true with the Linux Plus. Now, in the past, the Linux Plus was a two-part exam. And t passing this exam would also give you the LPIC 1 certification for the price of one exam. They've discontinued that. Now the Linux Plus is a one-part exam and it no longer meets the rigorous requirements for the LPIC 1. So right off the bat, we can assume that the LPIC 1 is going to be a deeper level of knowledge than the Linux Plus, if nothing else, by virtue of the fact that it's two exams and the Linux Plus is one. So the Linux Plus costs $358, and typically you can find 10, 20% discounts, but it's gonna be around $300. The LPIC 1 is a two-part exam. So while each voucher only costs $200, for someone living in the USA that is, the total cost is going to be $400. And they do have reduced rates for different areas depending on where you live. You can check out this graphic here and look at their website for more in-depth details. As you can see here, the LPIC 1 is just the first step of uh, three levels of exams, and each of these would give you broader and deeper knowledge of Linux systems. So you're not necessarily committing to taking all three, but a lot of people that go this route do recommend to take all three and then cap it off with the RHCSA. That is the third certification we will be looking at today. Uh, it came up a lot in my searches. It stands for a Red Hat Certified System Administrator. What is Red Hat? Well, Red Hat is a distribution of Linux that is very widely used in enterprises. So businesses, corporations, they like Red Hat. Why? Because it focuses on stability and security as well as scalability. Um, and standardization is one of the things that allows them to do this. So if you've played around with Linux at all, you've come to find that there is a lot of different packages. It, it's, it's a blessing and a curse of open source code. Anybody can see the source code. Anybody can write utilities. Anybody can make their own configuration. Anybody can write applications. So there's a lot of people doing a lot of different things. And while there are efforts to standardize and facilitate cohesion within the software packages, there's also a lot of inconsistency and there's as many options as you can find uh, for a lot of different Linux distributions. As far as I understand it, Red Hat goes the extra mile in assuring consistency and compatibility across the board, um, which is exactly what you would want if you're running a huge business and you have uh, business critical servers running um, web applications or hosting something that is absolutely necessary uh, to be able to be relied upon. So, so that's what Red Hat is. Um, and so if you're looking to go into IT, if you're looking to be a Linux administrator in the business world, you're probably going to be using Red Hat. And so the RHCSA is considered one of the uh, more more recognized and well-renowned certifications. So this would be like very deep knowledge, specifically with Red Hat, not as broad as the Linux Plus, not as broad as the LPIC 1 necessarily. The other thing that makes the RHCSA unique is that it is a hands-on test. So you're given a machine running Red Hat and you have to perform certain tasks on it. Now it's not an open book test, you don't have access to the internet, but you do have access to man pages. If you're not familiar with man pages, it's basically a manual of how different commands work and it gives you a list of the different options you can use for a specific command. 
I definitely think RHCSA is the hardest of these three exams, but it's a practical exam, and I think that that will appeal to certain learning types more than others. The RHCSA will cost you 500 golden doubloons. So I've already kind of touched on the learning objectives a little bit, but let's see what CompTIA has to say about the comparison between these different exams. All right, so as you can see here, um, they're, they're throwing some shade. CompTIA's throwing a little shade. They're uh, low-key hating on everybody else. Um, so, of course, they're going to cast this in the best light possible for themselves because they want you to take their exam because at the end of the day, they are a business making money off of this. Uh, but hey, performance-based questions, yep, they got them. LPIC, nah, they don't got them. RHCSA, only test tools, does not cover knowledge of broader topics. So again, this is what I said. RHCSA, not as broad, but it's deep. And they're casting this in a negative light, but to be honest, that could be a positive if you want to be a Red Hat system administrator or a Red Hat uh, engineer, then you don't want necessarily the broad knowledge, you want the deep knowledge. Um, LFCS, I'm not even going to address this. Uh, exam length, 90 questions, 90 minutes. LPIC, two exams. Uh, RHCSA, uh, two and a half hours. Experience level, 12 months as a junior Linux engineer. Now, I would honestly feel comfortable taking this uh, Linux Plus, even though I'm not a junior Linux engineer. I'm a tech support guy that uses Linux a lot. Um, so, you know, and even if you had no Linux experience, well, no Linux experience, you'd have a bit more learning to do, but you could definitely do it. You could definitely take the Linux Plus with no Linux experience. Now, RHCSA, I think you definitely want some, some Linux experience, So, but you can get that on your own. You can spin up a, a virtual machine. I have a video about that. Um, you can boot up whatever version of, of Linux you want and start playing around with it and get that experience as you're studying. And I think even someone with no experience, if they were determined and took the amount of time to study, I think that they could pass the RHCSA. All right, so the exam focus of Linux Plus, they're saying this focus on the latest technology and trends, uh, covers all major distributions and recognized in job ads. So a, a way to tone this down, I'm gonna interpret this for you. Um, their tests are updated every three years. Um, so, you know, they're saying that they're focused on the latest. Um, and it's for people in an enterprise environment. Okay, great. They cover all major distributions of Linux. So essentially what that means is they're going to teach you things that are applicable or consistent across all Linux distributions. But the downside of that is they're not getting into the nitty gritty of specific distributions. So you're going to learn generically a lot of good Linux knowledge, a lot of good foundational knowledge. Um, but you're not necessarily going to know the nuances of the different distributions of Linux. Maybe that's not what you need. So this could be perfect for somebody that just wants a good foundation of Linux knowledge. Uh, the RHCSA, it's a high level Red Hat sysadmin experience. Very hard to pass without significant hands-on experience and is recommended for advanced Linux professionals. So it almost seems like they're trying to scare you off from the RHCSA. I would not take it and don't be intimidated i would say if you know in the bottom of your heart that you're meant to be a red hat sysadmin then go for it you know find out what it takes make a study plan start studying do it i think linux plus or lpic are a great place to jump in for entry level or early career um or even if you're intermediate career but you've only ever touched windows um or, or mac os then you know, don't be uh, don't be too proud to take the Linux Plus or the LPIC. What about industry recognition? RHCSA is definitely the most recognized around the world. People are like, okay, that guy knows what he's talking about when it comes to Red Hat. He is certified as a sysadmin. LPIC one also recognized around the world. Linux Plus I think is a little bit more U.S. based. So if you're working in the U.S. Um, and you're not planning on becoming an admin, definitely go with the with the Linux Plus. I think it could be very useful for people in other places of the world simply by virtue of the fact that when you study and pass the Linux Plus, you're going to learn a lot. And if you're like me, sometimes it takes an exam and some learning objectives and some courses to force you to study and learn and memorize and, and, and understand the things that you need to know. And later on, when you get into your job, you're like, oh, I remember this. 
uh, allocating logical volumes or whatever. I, I get this. I studied this. I, I have some theoretical knowledge that I can now apply with hands-on experience. Ultimately, this comes down to what are your goals? What is your experience level? Um, and that's going to be the determining factor. However, we should also consider pay. Linux Plus, average salary, 87000 LPIC 1, average salary, 88000 RHCSA, average salary, 96000 Again, that's the average. The highs and lows are going to be determined by what can you do, who are you working for. I have decided to go with the AWS Certified Solutions and Architect Associate. And the reason why is because as I was looking around at all of these Linux certifications, I use Linux every day at work and I thought it would be good to learn about Linux. Uh, what I've been doing is at night before going to bed, I've just been reading uh, this book. And funny enough, when I'm as I'm reading this book, I covered a lot of the topics that are listed on the RHCSA uh, exam objectives. But to be honest, I was a little bit discouraged by the job openings and I'm not looking to change jobs. I was just curious, like, what is the demand for this certification? And I'm asking myself, what is the value that I'm bringing to the table at my current role by gaining this certification? And that's really what you should be asking yourself. If you're if you don't have an IT job yet, go with the Linux Plus or the LPIC one. Um, if you already have a job and you're using certain tools and you're in a certain environment, get a certification that makes you an expert in a field that you want to shift into or in a field that you're already working in, but you want to level up, right? So I touch Linux devices every day, uh, probably dozens of them. And I want to understand the environment that I'm in better. And I want to be able to contribute to problem solve, to think critically, and not just to follow the steps that were taught to me, right? I want to innovate. And so that's why I, I want to learn the theoretical knowledge behind it and the concepts and then start to apply that in the real world. Now, the reason I decided to go with an AWS certification is because we also use AWS and my company is transitioning towards emphasizing our AWS services more. I don't have any administrative power in the AWS space, but I would like to understand the concepts better. I would like to be able to bring ideas to the table. I would like to be able to contribute and to understand the platform and the services that I'm working with. And not only that, but Linux has been around forever and that doesn't make it less valuable. It makes it very valuable. But cloud is the new hot thing that everybody's talking about. That's high demand. That's higher paying. And so, you know, theoretically, that would be more valuable to learn in general, um, as well as still bringing value to my current role with my current company. So plot twist, I'm not getting a Linux certification right now. I'm studying for the AWS Solutions Architect certification. And uh, watch this video if you want to find out more about that.